On The Breakfast, Women in Management, Business and Public Service Wimbe is to hold her 21st annual conference. We'll have further discussion with stakeholders. And also on The Breakfast, around the world, someone suffers a stroke every three seconds, amounting to 12.2 million new stroke annually. What is stroke? What are the causes? Can it be prevented? We have an expert answer some of these questions. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. And as always, we start off the conversation uh, with a top trending, uh, you know, all that is making the rounds across different parts of social media. And that's what we call top trending. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday already. Well, a festival top trending is at the NDLEA freezes 20 billion naira in a socialites uh, 103 bank account. Wow. I mean, that's a lot to grapple with. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has seized 20 billion naira that was stashed in 103 bank accounts belonging to Afam uh, Ukatu. Uh, that's the chairman of a medicine group of companies. Well, uh, it's also important to note that the uh, NDLEA apprehended uh, AFAM on a flight from Lagos to Abuja on April uh, the 13th, that's 2022. Now, he was arrested over an allegation of three billion naira tramadol deal that was linked to Abakari, uh, the suspended deputy chairman or commissioner, please, that's DCP. Now, the agency secured an interim seizure of 25 properties belonging to the businessman on August the 29th. Now, they also moved to uh, ensure that charges against the businessman was also fixed and his six companies. Among several allegations in the charges sheet is that the billionaire was said to have converted 123.8 million naira which is considered to be proceeds of illegal act and is punishable under section 15 subsection 3 and 4 of money laundering prohibition act of 2020 uh, that's a 2011 so using his company's account to transact all of that i mean for me i'm just wondering one person has 103 bank accounts. That's a lot. So uh, it, it just brings us back to the conversation that we had recently about drug trafficking and why drug trafficking is, uh, you know, thriving and making a lot of progress in our system or in our country. And a lot of people have argued that the reason why, you know, drug trafficking seem to be uh, thriving is because of poverty. So a lot of people are poor and so people just need to earn a living and what have you. But, uh, I remember a guest that we had just recently, just this week, he said that's not the case, that those who are in the business of trafficking are the elites. You know, some persons who are, uh, I mean, highly placed, these are the persons who are trafficking drug. And if you want to talk about the poor, it might just be a fraction if you look at the entire population, not necessarily. And that's not the case. So this is also something, you know, that you want to think about and, uh, you know, you want to also ponder and consider. Now, there's also been other issues of whether or not uh, this publication of names. And I saw people at, at the end of the day when this was actually published, a lot of Nigerians reacted differently and they talked about what is it about not publishing the names of those who are involved in all of this? And I say the name has been published in this particular case. And so uh, it's another thing, but uh, it, it, it must be very commendable of uh, the NDLE boss uh, who's doing a lot. Uh, some people say that this has been going on for a long time and Nigerians are we're getting to this point because uh, the boss borrower has... Uh, Marwa has actually raised the bar, he's raised the standard, and that's why it feels like, oh, what's really going on? That this practice, drug trafficking, has been thriving for a very long time. But it might just, just be a different dispensation, and that's why it feels like, hey, there's a lot that's happening. It's commendable what the agency is doing, and we, uh, you know, say that all hands must be on deck, you know, against the fight of a drug and its trafficking and its use as well in our country. 
Another that's making the rounds is that the NNPC uh, has signed an agreement for rehabilitation of a Kaduna refinery with Dewu. So yes, uh, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and Dewu, a uh, group of uh, South Korean, have signed a memorandum of understanding uh, MOU for the rehabilitation of the Kaduna refinery. The president was actually there. He witnessed a signing uh, ceremony that happened in Seoul, that's in South Korea. And he expressed his delight over the development. Uh, that's because if you look at that, there's also uh, ongoing uh, rehabilitating or rehabilitation of the Port Harcourt refinery. There's been several questions that's been put out. The one question that you want to talk about is how much we have, uh, you know, chunked out, how much has been spent uh, in terms of rehabilitating or rehabilitation of our refinery. That's what, you know, the government, that's the question that a lot of persons, you know, are putting out. Number one question is, you know, how much we have spent over the years, over time, in terms of uh, rehabilitation of our refineries. And so uh, what exactly is going on? What have we really done in terms of all of this? You have some quotas saying we have spent so much money uh, in terms of refining the refineries that we have. And why are we still having the MOUs if we have actually, you know, allocated funds and resources for us to rehabilitate the refineries. Is this a time? How come we're having this agreement at this time? Some people think that it's very positive because you have the NMPC now and it's not within the, uh, you know, the control of government. It's been privatized and that's why we're having all of this development. As much as some people see this as, a, as uh, something to celebrate, others are not very positive about it. But it might also interest you to know that, you know, the Daewoo group of companies over time have been involved with some allegation of, I mean, they've been involved in scandal of death, uh, that you want to talk about corruption and what have you. And uh, we understand that Daewoo has a lot, you know, products that's out there, they have trucks and what have you. You don't also want to go there. But for every time, you know, there's an agreement, a memorandum that's been signed, there's also, um, you know, a consent. There's also a consent because you have the advantage and disadvantage. And a lot of people are worried about having to sign this deal with the South Korean company or group of companies that have been involved with, uh, you know, scandal, corruption scandal, debt scandal over time. Okay. But we move away. Another on a top trending is that the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, that's a CBN, has been asked to remove Arabic inscription from the redesigned Naira note. I haven't seen it. It's possible that those who are asking that it be removed probably would have seen it. They always say that there's no smoke or there's no fire. Uh, whenever you have a fire, there's definitely smoke. So no smoke without fire. Okay, or no fire without a smoke, <laughs> whichever way you want to put it. But that's what it is. And we know that recently the government has also, you know, put out an injunction saying there should be a withdrawal of the old currency because there's a plan to redesign in six weeks. And that hasn't really sat well with a lot of people. I've seen several thoughts. What's the implication for the economy? Is this supposed to help improve the economy? These are some of the questions that we need answers for. Uh, how does this, you know, change everything? What would become of this if you have, uh, you know, a new Naira being designed? And some people say this is also another means to fight uh, those who are hoarding cash, uh, corrupt persons, criminals, and what have you. So the conversation is endless, and I think that this would continue. But one that's been raised by, uh, you know, a special advisor to the Benway governor is that his categorically said, remove the Arabic inscription from the redesigned Naira notes because Nigeria is not an Arab nation and uh, English is, you know, the formal language that we have. And if you have to have Arab, on the note, then you have to have all of the languages that we have in Nigeria. That's going to be very dramatic. I'm not sure we want to go there, but it's important that, you know, our leaders be sensitive, you know, sensitivity is also key and part of leadership at a time where it feels like we're further divided. We know all of the conspiracy theories and the doubts that people have had recently about our government and 
everything that happened. So I, I think it's important that, you know, those who are calling the shots pay attention to the plight of Nigerians. And that's the much we can take on a top trending. We'll take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the papers. We'll call it off the press. Please stay with us.